What is the connection between iodine and evolution? Great question from Dr. Stephanie Daniel on the Functional Forum. So how did a reduction in caloric intake, or the onset of winter when it's cold and few things grow well, become coupled with a down-regulation of thyroid hormone activity? The answer may lie in the evolution of how thyroid hormone production became dependent on the availability of iodine. When the earth was covered largely in water and there were primordial organisms that started their life in the sea, resource abundance meant thick, flourishing beds of sea kelp. To these organisms, which used consumption as their primary means to sample their environment, thereby acquiring information, thick kelp forests conferred the presence of higher energy environments. More kelp meant more food. A more nutrient-rich sea salad bar meant this was a better environment in which to have many large broods. It's been theorized that kelp and other marine algaes, which emerged into existence some 20 million years ago, long before us, formed the basis of our food chain. Kelps are one of the many types of algaes that populate the ocean surface and are, and are the ri richest so one of the richest sources of iodine in biology. Kelps are characterized by variable life cycles, one of which accumulates iodine at 30,000 times its concentration in the ocean and up to 1% of its dry weight. 1% may not sound like much, but we're talking about a single element. Evidence suggests that iodine was concentrated in kelps for its antimicrobial and antioxidant properties, similar to how we use iodine in the antiseptic betadine. It was in the emergence of kelp as the basis of our food chain that we hypothesized iodine may have represented a reliable proxy of ecologic potential, as thicker kelp forests meant more resource abundance. In times of abundance, a species could take more risks. Measurements of iodine by each species up the food chain could serve as a far more effective signal detection mechanism than pure measurement of caloric intake, since not all calories are created equal in terms of their nutrient density. With each successive member of the food chain, the incorporation of a basic element like iodine obviates the likelihood that it was involved in the signaling as it could be potentially modulated based on how each member of the food chain put it to use. We believe that it was the concentration of iodine in the kelp forests of our prehistoric, prehistoric ecosystems that led to its emergence as a substrate for the production of thyroid hormone, which we all know is made of a, up of a tyrosine molecule surrounded by molecules of iodine. T4 and T3 hormones produced by the thyroid gland and utilized by every cell in the body regulates the proper function of cells, modulating growth, reproduction, metabolic rate, and lifespan, all features of the life history strategy. Much like the abundance of thick kelp forests meant plentiful resource availability, normal levels of circulating thyroid hormones signal to us for healthy rates of metabolism, helping us to maintain body temperature, regulating our growth and development, and influencing the rate of function of each cell. Further evidence of this can be seen in the response of thyroid hormones to direct cues of energy availability. For example, in starvation, low levels of glucose and insulin are associated with low thyroid function. And as we heard before, metabolic rates, and re metabolic rates decline, and thyroid T3 and T4 levels are lower in calorie-restricted animals like the hibernating bears. Thanks so much for watching, and for more great clips like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've created a special free video just for you. It's called The Five Steps to Becoming a Leader in Your Wellness Community, and it'll give you some of the starting points on how to position yourself as the leader in your zip code of your health community. All you have to do is click on the link below.